Let us work on our scenario, um, which is our little incident report. So we have scenario number one, and from scenario number one, we're going to be filling in this uh, template. If you are able to fill in this piece of paper, you have earned yourself two credits. So that's easy as, let me walk ourselves through it to make sure it's filled in accurately, because there's also a little marking schedule to go with it. Um, so I'm actually, I'll pass it out later. All right. So first thing we got to keep in mind is we are reading through this scenario and we're trying to decide what is um, factual and what is just opinion. So we have this Tuesday. That is a date, which is useful. That's not an opinion. So we know we're thinking about Tuesday when this has happened. If we look at our calendar, Tuesday was the 28th. So on our sheet here for our, um, where is it, report date, we will write 28 of March. You forgot what it's supposed to be what? Oh, you wrote today. No, we are filling in this report as if it was Tuesday. All right. We were in Ms. Quigley's lab. So that tells me the location, right? For session two. For session two. So that gives us, again, more factual information to fill in. We have, oh, sorry, date of report versus date of incident. You're right, you guys. You're correct. I am mistaken. So date of report, we're filling this in on the 31st. Date of incident is the 28th. All right. Time of incident was session two. 11.30. Oh, yeah, roughly 11.30. All right. Um, location, Ms. Quigley's classroom. So what room is she in? She's an S2. Who should have been supervising on that lesson, Ms. Quigley? She fired. <laughs> she wouldn't be fired. Well... It depends on the accident and depends on the liability. So this is why we fill in these incidents reports because it helps us determine if it was preventable or if um, someone's at fault. Is it just a genuine accident? Um, so you guys remember how in Miss Hayes class there was a little fire? Yeah. No. No. Oh, uh, there was a little fire in her classroom when they were using the Bunsen burners, and that's why when you guys were using the Bunsen burners, I had to stand next to you guys to make sure they were safe. So part of the wall caught on fire. <laughs> so it is fine now. <laughs> anyway, completed by, so I'm going to write my name down. You guys can write your name down. All right, cool. And as we read it, uh, we will also put in the additional information. Now this actually says, if we look at it, session two about 20 minutes after the bell. So that's also useful because now we can give a better time frame. So what time does session two start on a Tuesday? 11.10. 11, 11, 11, so we've already factored in the 20 minutes, haven't we? Yeah. Cool. Good job, guys. All right. Nima was using the Bunsen burner, so that helps give us one of the people that are involved. So Nemo was using the Bunsen burner, so that's important factual information. So we'll write down as people involved. First off, we can write down Nemo. Dory. And Dory. Dory said something. All right. Someone said, called his name. I think it was Dory, but I don't know. Is that factual or not? It's an opinion. It's an opinion. We're not sure. So we're not going to actually write that information down because we can't confirm if that was the case. So we're going to go, someone, name, or someone called his name. Uh, I think it was Dory, but I don't know. So we're going to not be... We're not going to include that bit in our report because we're not sure if it was Dory or not. Uh, it was quite noisy. That's a good description. We'll leave that in there for now. Um, our class likes to talk. Is that something that is factual? No, it's just an opinion. Maybe. All right. Anyway, Nemo spun around to see who it was knocking over the Bunsen burner. So we see that he spun around. There was a knocking over of the Bunsen burner in the process. Uh, fire roared across the bench. I didn't know fire could do that, and his notebook went up in flames. 
Is the Ida Del Fire can do that important? No. Nah. But we do have the notebook going up in flames. That's important. All right, you could smell burning. Again, that's pretty factual. All right, Nemo stupidly tried to put the fire out by slapping the book with his hands. So we don't need stupidly in there when we're writing our report, because that's, again, an opinion. Maybe he wasn't being stupid. I would say that isn't a good idea. But he did try to slap the book with his hands. Um, then he turned around and finally um, thought to turn off the gas, but I think the teacher had turned it off already. So again, we see there's an I think process, so we may not include that because they're not certain. So we might say in our report, someone turned off the gas. Um, so we have the gas turning off, and then he then shoved the book along the bench until it fell in the sink, and he turned on the tap to put out the flames. So we have a nice, an alleged story of what has happened with the notebook. Um, actually, now that I think about it, the Bunsen burner was very close to the edge of the desk before it was knocked over. Do you think that's important information? Yeah. Yeah. It isn't, I think, but potentially that Bunsen burner being close to the edge could have been the issue with some of this lab safety. All right. Afterwards, he complained that his hands were stinging. So we have hands were stinging is important because that tells us that something is wrong. They looked red, so the teacher got him to put them under cold water and sent him to the nurse. He came back at the end of class and his hands were strapped up and uh, said it wasn't hurting anymore. Now, again, if he's saying that it's not hurting anymore, it's probably his opinion. Hopefully it's not, but this is like potentially we need to follow up on that. Are we good so far? Yeah. All right, let's take some of that information and fill in more of our inf uh, stuff. So... We, who do we think are involved in this? Nemo. Nemo anybody else? Dory. Dory was pretty. Well, Dory, we're not 100% sure because they say, I think it was Dory. So we're not going to put Dory down. Uh, but Ms. Quigley is definitely involved because we hear that she has sent someone to the nurse and things like that. So we'll write Ms. Quigley. And we're not really sure about any other specific classmates that have been involved either, because they just said, you know, it was noisy, there was talking, but we're not 100% sure. All we can tell is what Nemo has done. All right, who was injured? Nemo. Nemo. All right, what was the treatment that we did? Was there no treatment? Was there first aid? Was there doctor? Was there a hospital? First aid. Yeah, it was first aid. They went to the nurse. Why is that flickering? Stop flickering. All right, stop. I'm going to unplug you and replug you in. You're going to see me for a second. Hi. <laughs> All right, hopefully it stops flickering. Okay. So, what parts of the body were injured in this? Just the hands. All right, so type of injury. What type of... It was a burn. Yep, so severity, he says that it was on the severity scale. Doesn't really hurt because he said when he came back, it wasn't hurting that much. So I'll put it at A. Maybe a one, a mild. Or sorry, yeah, you're right, mild. So mild pain maybe. Three or four. All right, that's the main things. Now, the description of the incident, this bit here is really important to get in chronologi chronological order. What does chronological mean? In proper order. In proper order from first, second, third, fourth. So we need to think about the sequence of events, and we need to get the sequence of events in the right order. This is where it's going to really make or break you on this unit standard. So when we are thinking about this, some of the information might be a little bit in the wrong spot, so we got to think about uh, maybe we need to put some stuff higher or lower. So what do you think would be the first kind of thing that we need to kind of note in our incident report? 
We already have the date here, so we're fine. So what's the first event that happened? Nemo was using the Bunsen burner. Nemo was using the Bunsen burner. Yep. Move that a little bit so we can see it a bit better. And I'm going to get this guy out from underneath there. All right. Now we see how it said, I think it was close to the edge, but we don't have any confirmation of that. So since there's like an un, like factual kind of bit, I'm not going to include it in the report. Um, but that could be something that we do as a follow-up to the incident, being like, we need to be more mindful of where Bunsen burners are. All right, what was the second thing that happened? Someone called his name. Someone called his name, and then what did he do? He moved and knocked the Bunsen burner. All right, after he moved, knocked over the Bunsen burner, then what happened? Uh, fired, across the bench. Yep, fired. See, yeah, roared across the bench. I will take that. Then what happened? Caught fire. Mm -hmm. Then what did Nemo try to do? Yep. Did he do that before? Or after he tried to move it? Let's see. He yeah. So he slapped it first. Didn't have any success getting the fire out, and then he moved it. So let's put that down. So. He tried to put out the book by slapping it. And we can write down no success. And then after that, what did he do? Yeah, the gas was turned off, and well, let's see what it says. So he slapped the book, then he turned around, finally thought to turn off the gas, but I think the teacher had turned it off. So during that process, the gas was turned off. So what we can say during step five, we can say during that occurrence, the gas was turned off. All right, after that, what did he do? What did he do? Um, he, he shoved the book along the bench and it fell into the sink. So he uh, shoved the book from the bench. Bench to sink, and then what did he do? Turn on the tap. Were the flames gone out then? Yeah. yeah. Flames now out. All right, if I run out of space, it says go ahead and continue on the back if needed. Um, I'm just gonna grab a piece of refill, so that way you guys don't have to worry about like, not seeing the first couple steps. All right. After that, then what happened? What would you say the next thing was? His hands. His hands. 
So he was complaining that his hands were hurting and they were red. So we ran them under cold water. And they were red. Um, who told him to put it under cold water? And then what happened? He got sent to the nurse. Is Quigley sent Nemo to the nurse? And then last thing? Did he come back? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Nemo came back to class with his hands in bandages. They're strapped up. He's gonna write strapped up. Because I can't spell right now. Cool. And then that's our incident report. Can we write in steps? Yep, you should be writing them in steps. So step one, step two, step three, step four. Because we want to think about this in chronological order. So what was the sequence of events? All right, I'll pass out the marking criteria so you guys can see what we're looking for. And then you guys will do the practice one. So if you can fill something like this out, then you'll be able to get two credits. So you can go ahead and glue that into your books. You can also glue this into your books as well. So you have an example of a marking schedule. Huh? Uh, is everyone done with that? Can I move it? Leave it. I'll give it to you in a second. Okay. Right, move this down. There you go. All right, so you guys can glue that in. That's for you. And then I've given you guys this as well. This is the marking criteria. Yeah, all that's for you. So you guys have an example in your book. And then you guys will practice. Yeah, yeah, you can. All right. Checklist? All right, so this thing here is just so you guys have an idea of how you're being assessed. Like I said, this is a unit standard, so it's going to be U-S instead of A-S. Uh, and there's only two choices in grades, achieved and not achieved. So that's why it's a unit standard, because it doesn't have anything that's merit or excellence. These are the things that you're going to be checking for when it comes to your unit standard. So the first thing is, if my, is my report factual with no opinions? Yeah. So when you check it, you can take it off, and then I will check it when I'm marking it and go, yep, that's fine. Is it relevant? Yes. Yeah, all the information I've given is important. I'm not stating extra things that aren't, that do with anything in the story. Is it accurate? You think that's an accurate representation of what happened? Yes. Yeah. Is it complete? Yes. Yeah. All right. Events are, war uh, are written chronologically, so they must be in the order that they happened. Yes. Yeah. All right, the report is expressed in a relevant format. So you're using this template. Yep, we use that template. Vocabulary, including technical language, is precise, clear, and contributes to the relevant tone. So the words are shown in the order, keeping the language very formal.
Yeah. yeah, it's not like Nemo's dumb. All right. And then punctuation, spelling, grammar errors do not affect the readability or overall meaning. So you can have those. Uh, it's not an English assessment, but it needs to make sure that it doesn't interfere with the understanding of that. Yes. Yeah. Do those five things, you've gotten yourself two credits. Yes. Easy, easy. Easy. Yeah, you can take both of them. I'm just going through them as like an example. So what you're going to do when you guys have your practice ones and your actual assessment is you're going to do the ticked, uh, checked by me, and then when I go to market, I'm going to do mark by teacher. Oh, this, this is actually worth two credits? This is, what it, this is worth two credits. Not from this, because I've done this with you. Yeah. You can take it off. I'm just showing you guys, does it meet the criteria? This is the criteria for the unit standard. Are we okay? All right, I'm mindful of the time because there was some discussion about using your preferred activity time today. So we have five minutes from today, which I'm happy to award you guys because you guys have been working really well. And there's still 10 minutes. So, well, these are your choices. Either you use your full 15 right now, or we can use 10, or we can use five. It's up to you guys. Um, or whatever you guys don't, if you don't use the five minutes, I can add it to that one and you get 15 next, and next week. week we'll have five minutes yeah, so next week I see you guys on Tuesday. So that's an additional five minutes there if you are on task. And then I see you guys on Thursday, which is another five minutes. So you have, if you're not doing, what are you doing if you aren't not using your time? Then you're working on classwork. Yeah, you're working on this. Yeah, we'll do this. Yeah, we'll just do this. Wanna do this? Yeah, we'll just use the Alright, so we're gonna save the five minutes from today's lesson. We're gonna work to the bell. Alright, let me give you your next thing. Yeah, sorry Brooklyn, you're outvoted.